Welcome to the Bio 2 Bunker. This is Professor Kerfit. Hope all is well where you are. Uh, this week, this lecture is going to be a very brief lecture, but I at least want to touch on the existence of the kingdom fungi or the fungi. This is one that uh, many people love or hate on their pizza. Uh, I should do, might have to do a, a question on Top Hat, uh, whether you love or loathe the kingdom fungi. But we can find this in our food in a number of places, including pizza, uh, but also um, blue cheese. Uh, there's living fungi in blue cheese. I bet even fewer people like blue cheese than like mushrooms on their pizza. Now, fungi is interesting. Now, there's more groups of fungi than just the ones that make mushrooms, but that's the one we're probably most familiar with. And um, what I want you to see in this figure, let me fire up my tablet here. What I want you to see in this figure is the body plan of fungi. So remember, fungi, like you and I, are heterotrophs. They don't photosynthesize. They, they don't move around. So they used to be studied along with plants uh, by botanists, but we discovered recently they're more closely related to animals than they are to plants, but they don't run around, right? So the body plan uh, is, is made up of these chains of cells that we see all throughout. We can see, it, see them down here called hyphae. H Y P H H Y P H E H Y P H A E that looks terrible but uh H Y P H hyphae um it looks like strands of spaghetti that is probably the most surface to uh, volume ratio rich body plan there is right and the chains of cells are called hyphae but the body of of the fungus so all this all those chains put put together is known as a mycelium. I think that's spelled more or less correct. Mycelium is the body of a fungus. Now, fungi are one of the few groups that produce enzymes that can digest wood. And if you look at that, that wood looks hairy. Why does it look hairy? Because it's covered in hyphae. And once again, when you have a body plan like this, that is an incredibly, an incredibly rich surface to area volume ratio. So remember what these do is they secrete digestive enzymes. They don't ingest food like animals do, but they secrete enzymes outside of themselves, digest the material, then reabsorb it. And that's how they, uh, that's how they eat. So how are fun, fungi like plants? This would be something I'd ask you to answer out loud in class. They, they don't move. They reproduce with spores. Mm, that's about it. How are they like animals? They ingest food. I mean, that's not right. I just said they don't do that. They digest food. They are heterotrophs. They don't make their own food. Now, they make hydrolytic enzymes. Hydrolytic means enzymes that hydrolyze. Remember the word lyse means to break. They break molecules with enzymes, kind of like our digestive enzymes. What would be the best body shape to do that if you're going to live in your food, digest food and reabsorb it? Well, hyphae, that long stringy body plan is incredibly, incredibly well adapted to that lifestyle. Think of mold on a piece of bread. That's fungi. It looks hairy because of that incredible surface to area volume ratio they maintain. Now, another group of fungi that's kind of an ecological group you might run into are um, a group we might refer to as mutualists, meaning both members live together uh, and both benefit. And that's a lichen. Lichens, like we see on this rock, these grow all over the trees here on campus, um, all, over the, all over the place in the state of Arkansas. These, um, if we zoom in on them like we see here, consist of um, fungal hyphae. Once again, just like we saw before, we see hyphae. Come on, draw. All right, there we go. And then this green stuff in here is algae or sometimes cyanobacteria, but a photosynthetic symbiont. So the hyphae provide a place to live and hold water and the algae photosynthesizes and feeds the fungus and they live together this way they are they're not uh, an algae i'm sorry a uh, a lichen is not 
really an organism. It's a community of two, at least two kinds of organisms. And what's cool is this area holds water. So if you take these and put them in a, and I thought we might do this in lab, but we won't get to this semester. You put these in a uh, Petri dish with some water and then look at them in a microscope. All kinds of pond life comes out of these. Even if this was on the side of a tree, it's full of pond life. You'll find ciliates in there and especially water bears, tardigrades, a group of animals that are real small and really good at, at surviving drought will come out of here. These little critters with lots of legs <laughs> come out of there um, from these lichens, which are a, once again, a community of uh, mutualists, basically a community of uh, algae and fungus. Fungus also form mycorrhizal associations with roots, increasing the surface area of roots. Look at all that surface area of, of that little tiny pine tree. And a lot of that fu those fuzzy edges are fungal hyphae increasing the surface area, allowing that uh, root to absorb a lot more water than it could and a lot more minerals than it could on its own. So here's an example of grass on the left grown with mycorrhizal fungi and grass planted at the exact same time on the right where they neutralized the soil, destroyed the fungus. There is no fungus in that soil. Look how good uh, the grass is growing here versus the, the grass over here is stunted looking. Those mycorrhizae have a huge impact on the health of plants. In fact, some of the earliest plants that invaded land that we have fossils for have mycorrhizal fungi associated with them. This is an ancient relationship. Fungi also can form diseases. So two benefits of fungi, mycorrhizal fungi, of course, food for us. Um, uh, lichens uh, are, are a ecological group of these. Uh, 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 fungus breaks down dead material, allowing to, the nutrients to recycle into the planet, an incredibly important job. So fungi and bacteria are the two major groups that break things down, but they can also cause disease. Here's uh, some fungus growing on a goldfish. That's a common aquarium disease. Uh, a type of fungus that's a single-celled fungus, known as a chytrid, uh, uh, might be responsible for some of the amphibian deaths uh, on the planet that we're seeing. Um, so they cause disease in lots of groups, including plants and, and different animals. Um, corn smut, a common crop disease. Look at how weird that looks. Um, spots on leaves are often a type of fungus. And one of my favorite, favorite which is ergot on rye. Uh, rye is a grain uh, grown to make bread and you get ergot on it and when you accidentally eat it, uh, it can have effects similar to LSD. Um, they think that uh, there were some of uh, the visions that people thought they had in the Middle Ages were caused by ergot on the rye. So uh, fungus makes lots of, of uh, secondary compounds like plants do. Now, I mentioned these secondary compounds before. Let me emphasize what they are. Primary compounds are things like ATP, the things that an organism makes to survive. Secondary compounds are things that they make that they don't need to survive, but they use as defenses or to attract pollinators or whatever. Fungus makes a lot of these compounds uh, to probably prevent themselves from being eaten. And some of them uh, mess with our brains when we eat them, which is why they, you know, why magic mushrooms uh, exist, right? A real big problem, especially where people go caving, and, uh, they go spelunking and they bring uh, fungal spores with them without realizing it, is white nose mold, which gets on the noses of bats um, and it itches and it probably hurts and it keeps them from hibernating and, and it eventually kills them. Uh, a lot of bat species in, are heavily threatened by this. Ringworm on humans, called ringworm, but it's not a worm, it's a fungal infection. Ringworm is a common disease caused by fungi. Now remember, sometimes fungi is hard to treat. Why? Because it's a eukaryote just like you. So some of the drugs to treat it are pretty powerful and might affect you as well. Athlete's foot, there it is under a microscope. Athlete's foot, what do you see? That foot has tons of hyphae in it. <laughs> Uses for fungi, I mentioned a few already. We eat mushrooms. Um, blue cheese has it in there. Um, yeast, yeast that we use to make bread rise is fungus. It's a single celled fungus. Uh, when it eats sugars and it's in an anaerobic environment, it releases lots of carbon dioxide gas, causes bread to rise. We could put a lot of biology together here, by the way. That flower is made out of endosperm. 
remember that. And uh, inside there we have yeast, which is undergoing cellular respiration, which we could talk about. We release carbon dioxide gas, causes the bread to rise. But fungus can also cause your bread to go moldy after a while. It starts to eat the bread. Not the yeast in this case, but a different fungus starts to eat the bread. If we put that under a microscope, we would see lots of hyphae. Here's an example of some uh, spores of a fungus growing on a piece, in this case, of blue cheese. Uh, this is blue cheese loaded with fungus, including the reproductive structures. Those are uh, fungal spores. Those are um, produced by meiosis, just like in a plant. There's agcaric or fly agcaric mushroom. Looks like one from a cartoon or a video game, right? Uh, those can cause hallucinations. In fact, uh, reindeer sometimes apparently eat them and like to trip out a little bit. And here's the gross thing. Somehow people figured out that if you eat these, they can get you really high, but they can make you sick. But somebody somehow figured out that if you drink reindeer pee after they ate the mushrooms, you can get high and not get as sick. I don't think it's worth it. Another very important one. Penicillin is derived from from these. Now notice the, the structures here, the reproductive structures here look just like the picture we saw on blue cheese. Um, and here what we see is we have uh, a fungus known as penicillium growing here. And then we put stra uh, staphylococcus, a bacterium on this plate. And notice there's a ring of inhibition all around staphylococcus. You'll do this if you take a micro course. This fungus produces secondary compounds that pop bacteria and kill them. This is how we started to create antibiotics. Of course, evolution now is causing uh, resistant strains of bacteria. Another very expensive mushroom is called a truffle. Uh, not the chocolate kind of truffles, but real like French cuisine truffles that I don't know if I've ever had. Um, they are uh, found underground. It's an underground kind of uh, mushroom type structure. And they often use pigs to help dig them up. The pigs like to eat them. The pigs locate them and then they dig up the truffle and then feed the pig a treat to uh, let it know it did a good job. Anyway, that's a, just a quick review of the kingdom fungi. Some of the uses and some of uh, the diseases um, you should be familiar with the surface area, uh, the hyphae, the uh, mycelium, the name of the fungal body is mycelium. Um, the, the things we think of as mushrooms are the parts that make the spores in that kind of fungus. So they're spore making structures. They release spores, they fall on the ground, grow into more hyphae. Uh, they are decomposers. Uh, some of them are mutualists in the forms of lichens. They break things down or they live together in, in that form. And we have found many uses for them. A very interesting but uh, understudied kingdom.